country churchyard. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lea. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight, and all the air a solemn stillness holds, save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. Save that from yonder ivy-mantled tower the moping owl does the moon complain of such as, wandering near her secret bower, molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms that yew trees shade, where heaves the turf in many a moldering heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid, the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep. The breezy call of incense breathing more, the swallow twittering from the straw-built shed, the cock's shrill clarion or the echoing horn. No more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hearth shall burn, or busy housewife ply her evening care. No child run to lisp their sire's return, or climb his knees the envied kiss to share. Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield, their furrow off the stubborn bleed has grown. How jocund did they drive their team afield, how loud the woods beneath their sturdy stroke. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys and destiny obscure. No grandeur here with a disdainful smile, the short and simple and all to the poor. The boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, awaits alike the inevitable hour, the paths of glory lead but to the grave. Nor you, you Proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er their tomb no trophies raise. Where through the long drawn aisle and fretted vault, the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honor's voice provoke the silent dust, or flattery soothe the dull, cold ear of death? Perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire. Hands that the rod of empire might have swayed, or walked to the ecstasy of the living lyre. But knowledge to their eyes, her ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did ne'er unroll. Chill penury repressed their noble rage, and froze the genial current of the soul.